morning. Hey, I want to thank the Praise Band. They did a great job. Ryan's, uh, Ryan's too tall and has too much hair, but I like him anyway. So good to be with you this, uh, this morning. I don't think I've ever preached from this pulpit. I can't remember. I remember some uh, old days, old days, 60s and 70s, when I uh, sat back in the, in the back with my family and sometimes was up in the balcony uh, doing no good. Anyway, uh, it's good to be with you today. I just want to, uh, I just want to say how much I appreciate the um, opportunity to be here, but I also want to appreciate the opportunity to say that uh, this church nurtured me uh, in the ministry. Uh, Charlie Daly, Rod Buchanan, um, Warren Fish. Uh, I, remember, I remember when I first came to Richmond, the first phone call I got was from Oh, uh, no, 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 no. I get a lot of brain freeze here. <laughs> Curly hair. Come on, help me out. Anyway, he called me up and he said, uh, he said, We're, we, have a, uh, we have a Tuesday morning Bible study at the hospital. And I thought, oh, okay, I'll go to that. And that was one of those, uh, one of those uh, uh, wonderful moments where I got to be with some other pastors and we shared the same concerns and all the rest of it. Uh, so many of the pastors, Larry Draper and, and, uh, and so many others uh, have helped me uh, at, in, the, in, the, uh, in the life of a pastor. Uh, today I want to read to you uh, for, uh, the scripture passage, which is from Luke uh, 5, the first 11 verses, if you want to turn to that. I want you to look and see, you can tell that I'm a real preacher because I have duct tape on my, on my Bible. I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard Version and um, hope that you will follow along. But let's pray first. And now, Lord, we look to you and we ask that you might illumine us as we listen to your, your word. Not just read it, but to hear it with our hearts. To help us, O oh Lord, to uh, feel the breeze off the Galilean lake. Help us to hear the voice of Jesus as he speaks to the fishermen. Help us to enter into the body of Christ. And now, Lord, watch over us and be with us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it came about that while the multitude was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, or the, the Sea of Galilee. And he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had got out of them and they were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, he got into one of the boats, and then he spoke to Simon and he asked him, to put out, a, put out a little way from the land, and he sat down and began teaching the multitudes from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the uh, deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Simon answered him and said, Master, we've worked all night and caught nothing. Anybody want to say Amen. We have worked all night and caught nothing. But, and this is a good one, but at your bidding, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to break, and they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And when they came, they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Wow. But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Well, Jesus knew that. For amazement had seized them and all of his companions because of the catch of fish what they had taken. And so also James and John, the son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear, from now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, listen, 
they left everything and followed him. The word of God for the people of God. Can you say thanks be to God? Thanks. Would you pray with me? And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I told you I grew up here, uh, and a year ago I retired from uh, full-time pastoral ministry. I pastored in uh, Norwalk, I pastored in Caldwell, I pastored in Richmond, I became a superintendent, much to the amazement of my friends, um, and, the, and you know, they just thought that was the, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, but that's okay, I got the job anyway, and I served in Macedonia, up, uh, up north, and in uh, New Comerstown, and finally in East Liverpool. Had a long, good journey. Met many good friends, met many, many faithful, good people. So when I retired last year, the first uh, three months of my retirement, I did a whole lot of nothing. Say amen. amen. Except for moving boxes and mowing grass and doing all the things we had to do to get into the new house. Um, I read some books uh, on the back porch of my house some Harry Potter, some Tolkien, some King, uh, some kind of irreverent uh, comedy in Bloom County. And then I had on my, on, my, on my bookcase, how many of you have a bookcase full of books? And you, sometimes you just look over it and you go, where did that come from? You might have stolen it from the library, you didn't know, you haven't, you haven't really repented from that. But I had a book, and I don't know where I got it, I don't know why I got it, but it was called The Boys in the Boat. And I thought, what is this about? Well, that's about boys racing in a sculling boat. And I went, that sounds interesting. But it was. It grabbed my attention. Boys in the Boat by Daniel James Brown. In short, the story was about nine boys who uh, lived during the years of the Depression, and they were farm boys and fishermen and loggers, and they had all come to Washington State. And they, um, and they, had, a, they had a sculling team. And the, the short synopsis of the book is that these boys from the West Coast, these, these uh, farm boys, these fishermen, and these loggers, uh, went on to defeat the West Coast Ivy League in California, and then to beat the East Coast Ivy League in, uh, in the finals. And then finally, they achieved a stunning victory at the 1936 Olympics in Berlin under the watchful eye of Adolf Hitler. It is a heck of a read. Have you ever had a book that you never thought you'd read, and then all of a sudden you couldn't put it down? I mean, somebody go, yeah, I read, yeah, I, you picked up a book and you go, I don't know what this is. And then you go, oh my gosh, I can't stop. I got to read it all the way through. Well, that's what that book did to me. Highlighting, uh, highlighting it was especially just a couple of people. Joe Rance was one of the boys in the boat. And then there was also the, uh, the, the ship maker, the, the, the sculling boat uh, craftsman whose name was George Yeoman Pocock. Fascinating, that's just, that's just on the thing. But you see, as I read the book, as I read this book, it kind of hummed, it kind of vibrated, something within me. And uh, first, the first thing that came to my mind that it was that, you know, boats have a whole, are, are, are represented many times in the, in the Bible. Not Noah and the ark, there's the first boat story. Jonah the reluctant prophet, who takes a boat and sails away from the commands of God. Anybody been like that? I know, I know the right thing to do, but I think I'll go this way and not that way. Um, Jonah had a tough time. He was swallowed by a whale and who was, would, would be projectile vomited up onto the place where God wanted him to be, Nineveh. It's a wonderful story. Jesus uh, will call disciples to leave their boats, their fishing nets, and to follow him. The apostle Paul would advance the gospel by traveling through, through the furthest, to the furthest reaches of the, of the Roman Empire, enduring storms and shipwreck so that he could preach the gospel. And, of course, for extra credit, the boys in the boat, most close to us right now, is the 50th anniversary of Men on the Moon, boys in the boat. 
so to speak. I was taken by this story. As I, as I read the scriptures over and over again, it started to catch me that, first of all, Jesus was a carpenter. That's what he'd done all of his life. Jesus was a craftsman who had a calling. He was, he would have, I think as he stood on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, that he watched Simon and uh, the rest of his friends, uh, wor you know, working on the boat, pulling in the nets, repairing things. Uh, I think that he would have, uh, he, he may have, because he was a carpenter, he may have been standing on the shore and looking at that boat and saying, man, I don't think I ever got a, a mast job in Nazareth, you know. How did they make, how did they get it so long? How did they get it so strong? Maybe Jesus sat there and uh, looked at it and uh, wondered, how, how would I craft a rudder for a boat such as they were doing? And geez, he probably wondered, how is it that you get the, the, uh, the boards in the boat to warp and to hold together and to be watertight? Wow, he must have been very impressed, I think, as he looked at the boat and as he looked at the men who worked the boat. See, the interesting thing about this other boatman, George Yeoman Pocock, was that he was a master craftsman of these sleek and fast and eloquent vessels. Now, I have to say to you, I don't know this, I don't know this from, um, from experience, but I can tell that uh, rowing is a grueling sport. Rowing is a grueling sport. Rhythm is essential. Strength and stamina are essential. Teamwork is paramount. If the crew cannot learn to pull together, they will ultimately do what? Fall apart. If we don't pull together, we will fall apart. You know, we all have to pull together. Families must pull together or they will fall apart. Can you say that? Pa families must pull together or? Oh, now all of you say it again. If we don't pull together, then we will? Very good. Now help me out with this because it helps me to know what's going on. Citizens of our country have to learn to pull together or we will? Oh. Amen. All right. Hey, listen. Churches must pull together or they will? Ah, oh, yes, my friends. Legislators must pull together or we will? That's right. Denominations have to pull together or they fall apart. Liberal, liberals, liberal and conservative Christians must pull together or they will yeah we're always in that danger are we not if we do not pull together if we are if we say that we are the body of Christ then how are we working together or are we falling apart that's a tough one for me I and and I'm and I mean it tough for us all if we do not pull together we will fall apart. See, oftentimes we get, and it's not always, and it's not always disagreement with our friends. It's sometimes disagreement just with ourselves and our circumstances. But, you know, if we are distracted by the world, if we're divided in our beliefs, if, our, if we're disillusioned in our changing times, and if we are dead set against one another because all of us, uh, are prone to be puffed up and inflated by our own pride, then we will fall apart. Pretty simple. All too often, we as a church, the body of Christ, are conflicted. Sometimes we're double-minded. And we are sometimes petty in our grudges. Say, Lord, have mercy. I'll say, Lord, have mercy. Sometimes we are petty in our grudges. 
Say it louder. Sometimes we're petty in our grudges. There you go. There you go. I want to make sure that you got it right. Sometimes, sometimes we are lukewarm in our faith and tepid in our love. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Because, friends, we have been saved. And it's not of our own. It is a gift of God. There's no place for our pride. There's no place for us to say, hey, I'm first in line. I don't care how long you've been here. I don't care what you've done. But if we don't understand some simple pieces of it, if we don't get reminded of the simple pieces of the gospel, which is we are sinners and we are saved by grace. And we don't deserve it. We can't earn it. And we have to learn to pull together. We have to be able to say, I'm a sinner and I am saved by grace. And that's the only thing that I can be sure of. We are all prone to pride. See, they put me up here in front of this nice pulpit and I have my tie on. And Yes, I'm a religious professional. So listen to me. No, no, no. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Amazing grace. Just remember, if we, if we do not pull together, we will. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Thank you, gracious God, for the church. And I offer up to you this church, my home church. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to be here, to share. Lord, look down upon us and forgive us in our sinful and wayward attitudes and ways. Help us, O oh Lord, to pull together because we cannot afford to be pulled apart. Help us to be merciful to each other. Help us to realize always that we are saved by your grace. O oh Lord, bless us and keep us. For we ask it in Christ's name and for Christ's sake. And all of God's people said,